Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. And I know I told you we're going to get fish in the next episode and we're going to do that. But it's still the night before and the bristle worm trap has caught another amphipod. And so I need to get in there and clean it out. So hold on a second and I'll get the trap and get them. So here it is. I got three tiny bristle worms and one amphipod. And I mean, I cannot tell you. It's been minimum three years since I've seen an amphipod in this t in the cube. Uh, it used to be loaded with them. They all kind of went missing. All right, I'm going to need to use two hands to get him safely. Whoa. All right, now I'm basically holding it with my bare hands. All right, get the light on. So I'm pretty sure he's in there. And there has also been a copepod sighting. There's another one right there. So I did toss some, some pods, some of these. I used the other time the the reef nutrition trig tigger pods did put some of those in the tank today but just a few but that could be what those are gonna go be sitting on the glass probably too dark to see um Corey frags closed up so i'm not sure if it's eating or if the snails are bugging it because the, the snails are all over that frag probably because it tastes like that gel stuff the anemone has gone even further back into a corner and i can't hardly see it at all now <laughs> so yeah that is the most shy an enemy I've ever seen as far as I could tell it's not the it's not the what you call it it's not it's not the chemicals in the tank I've I've tested the tank tanks fine it's due for a water change which I'm gonna do tomorrow but uh, down here I'm pretty sure the pods have officially taken off. I can pretty much see them on contact. There's one right there. Like anytime I come down here to look, I can find at least one or two of them now. And there's, yep, there's another one. And keep on looking. Anyway, we've also got these little twisty things. Uh, they the Cato ball was loaded with them so now they're on the back there and they're on the glass a little bit but that's a sign of a healthy tank right so feeling good about that so tomorrow up there in the darkness of the tank uh, maybe we'll peek in on them real quick hate to blind stuff with the flashlight there's the hiding place of two of the Narcissus snails now. Uh, there's one Sir snail that went about that far and then stopped. There's one on the rock there, one way up on the rock there. This one is working the glass just like I would hope. So everything is still alive, thank goodness. And tomorrow we get fish. All right, well, as the unfortunate thing of being me is that I tend to wake up late. I woke up so late today that the intended last stop of the day is now going to be the first stop of the day because the place closes at five. And I don't really understand why places do this. Uh, you know, it's like Friday and you're gonna close just after the time most people go to get off of work. 
it doesn't make sense. Why are you open all day while people are at work, but then close once people are off work? It doesn't seem like a smart business sense for, you know, for people who sell stuff to people who work. You know? <clears throat> I don't know. Well, so much for getting fish. Um, they're closed because of the virus panic, so I definitely won't be getting fish today. That's a letdown. Uh, the thing said they were open, but they've got signs up that says they're not open, so. Uh, we're gonna hit some other fish stores and we're gonna get some other stuff. Um, it wasn't the only thing I was gonna get today, so let's go get something else from somewhere else. So I'm back home. Uh, the, the one fish store being closed uh, is kind of a bummer. Um, I was gonna buy the fish from there. Uh, I did look at another store. I was gonna get a different fish, but um, I really have my heart set on that on those other two fish. So we're gonna hold out on getting a new fish, even though I promised it to you guys. And I'm sorry I didn't get. I made the promise and then didn't get it to you. So what I did get was. Got a pump, an air pump for the uh, for the brine shrimp downstairs. Uh, I don't think I have enough flow, and that's probably what went wrong with the second hatch. Um, did get the proper air stone for that um, for that skimmer and that cube over there. So we'll see if that makes a difference in in the skimming, and then. I got nearite snails for the cube. So we're going to start, we're going to get them into a cup and then get them acclimating. Or maybe not a cup because the cup didn't work out so good last time because of the wave pumps, but whatever. Try and get that to stand up. And then they have brine shrimp that they raise there. And they do a pretty good job of it because these guys are pretty big. So these are going to be what I'm going to feed to my fish today. The NEM here is moving again. Uh, it is now completely under this rock. So that I can see it, in fact, from the front here. Put the light on it. But as per usual, it doesn't look real healthy, but we'll keep an eye on it. That was something I almost did at the fish store today was buy another one, but with this one not doing real good, I figure I can't really risk it right now. Not to mention that the NEMs they had are pretty much the same as this NEM. So new stock another day for this tank. I'm tossing some brine shrimp in here. A bit out of time and they're going wild for it so let me try and throw some more in Of course, as per usual, the clown goby is struggling with the live brine shrimp. This big bully of a clownfish is grabbing most of them. But the goby's been picking at something, so I think he's getting some food here. And for a few of these, I'm just going to kind of dump them in the tank here All right, so now there's a bunch in the tank get blown around by the wave pumps and we'll keep an eye out for the engineer gobies to start popping up Oops. 
course, you spilled a bunch of them on the floor there. And to see one goby in the back picking them off. There he is. Sure, snails are moving around the, the rocks. There's still one on the glass here. Can't tell how well he's eating this stuff, but definitely trying to chew on the diatoms. You can see the diatoms are forming kind of in a pattern. This is apparently right where the return hits. So there's a nice spread pattern where the diatoms have hit the glass and then stuck. But I was hoping the engineer gobies were going to come out and eat today. But it looks like they're going to eat from inside their rocks. So I'm just going to take the rest of these brine shrimp that I have left over and pour them into this brine shrimp tank. Toss a little food in with them. So now they're in there with a the little plankton, a little bit stronger pump. Now that, that new pump is pumping. I'm not quite impressed. It says it's for a 40 gallon tank. And if that's the maximum flow that you think a 40 gallon tank needs, then I'm pretty upset. But this, this pump was pretty cheap, so that's what I get for going cheap. But hopefully these brine shrimp will survive longer in here. And then I'll have food for at least a little while for these, for the fish upstairs. If I can keep these guys alive. So now it's time to put the nearite snails in. Of course, I got one that doesn't want to let go. Or should I say two? And that, of course, didn't go the way I wanted it to go, but it went and it's gone. So I think there were 10 nearite snails all together. Two of them are now down there in the bottom. The rest of them are all clustered together right here on this rock. And that is my plastic chunk from the... Uh, Coral and algae bottle that they're up against there. And hopefully they get to eat in this um this this diatome bloom here. But I'm probably gonna have to clean the tank regardless. So this is the Coral Life Biocube skimmer out of the 24 gallon nano cube here I've gone ahead and replaced the air stone that I had on there with this wood stone that Coral Life themselves make and you can see the air hose just kind of runs through the bottom you kind of had to feed it through the top to uh, to get it to where I could reach it and change it out so
so there we go pull it back down in there and then we'll toss it back in the tank I have it like kind of hooking over this edge here and the bubbles are quite different than it was before go ahead and throw my top on it and see what difference that made my water level is a little too high right now but it's a more more of a fizzy than it was before so maybe that's what it'll take for this uh, for this skimmer to start working properly again it's still early yet but the lights have started to ramp down in the tank already so this is pretty much going to be our last look at it uh, the two nearite snails that fell to the bottom are already walking around on the rocks and the big cluster has started to split up a little bit and of course one more time i have to peel the old urchin off the new urchin a couple times a week got to peel that thing off his back I've taken what was left of the tigger pods here that I fed yesterday. I poured about a third of them into the refugium on the cube. About another third of them into the display area of the 250 tank. And then I poured the other third uh, into the brine shrimp tank here. And... I'm watching the, the brine shrimp in here and they've definitely they've definitely really taken to this tank i mean they they're down on the bottom eating the stuff and then once they're full they go up and swim around and then i can also see the tigger pods in here and although it says it's only got the one species yeah there's one really cruising through there i mean it says it's just um uh the tri Gropius, Californicus, yeah, uh, whatever these are, I mean, it says it's only that one type, but I can see those types are like the free swimming ones, so I can see one in there, uh, there's not a chance you can see it, you can probably see the brine shrimp though, but um, I can see those in there, but I've also got stuff in here on the glass that that definitely came from that bottle and they look almost the same except they completely hug the gra the glass and you know obviously I'm not looking at them with the microscope so they might not look exactly the same uh, here's one that one's crawling on the glass itself oh and it just jumped off but anyway I think I've got more than one type of pot in there but everything looks like it's doing cool. Um, this pump definitely has just about enough flow. I'd like a little more flow in this tank. Just, you know, the nature of what I'm keeping in here. But anyway, that's, that's going to be about it for today. Um, I realize this episode is probably kind of boring because I didn't get the fish and... I mean, I just got more snails. It wasn't that interesting. But, um, you know, I've got more stuff coming in the future. Uh, you're all locked in. Um, I'm semi-locked in. So I'm going to keep trying to make videos since I got nothing better to do. So <laughs> uh, who knows what I'll do tomorrow. Um, I did a water change on the cube already. Uh, I might do a water change on the 250. But I don't think I'm going to film that. Um, might cut some rocks up, grind them up, who knows. Uh, might do some car stuff. Um, we'll see where the day takes me.